The following interview was conducted with Irvin Traeger, Traeger, Professor yeah. Emeritus of Aviation Technology for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, September 22, 2009 at his home in West Lafayette. Also sitting in is his wife. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good afternoon, Dr. Trigger. Thank Appreciate you. That. It's not doctor. Okay. No, that, that grinds on me a little bit. Because I, sh- I started the Ph.D., and there was no need to, to uh, earn that advanced degree in the state, uh, at the state that our department was in, you know, just beginning. And so I never did that. Okay. I started several courses in that toward the Ph.D., and... But this is, you got it. I've done, I've done the fine. equivalent, so. There. But I am sorry I never got the title. Uh, tell us where and when you were born and your parents. I was born in the Bronx in New York. Okay. What 19, year were you born in? In 1928. Okay. October 16th. Okay. Do you have any siblings? And tell us about the early years. Well, I was just a typical city boy. I was very, very independent when I was. My parents uh, uh, treated me very well. Uh, we were, they were somewhat poor and and so I didn't have a lot of money, but they let me go wherever I wanted to go, and they let me do whatever I wanted to do, essentially. It'd it'd be no big deal for me to get a nickel in my pocket and get a hop on the subway when I was eight or nine years old, go downtown, look at the pawn shops, uh, wander around downtown all all day. They they weren't worried about it. In those days, New York, I guess, had a reputation of being a little safer (laughs) than it is right now. A little smaller, too. Yeah, I'm not sure my parents would have permit that now, but in any case, they 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 let me. They gave me free reign for what I wanted to do, and I never gave them any trouble. And uh, well, what, tell us a little bit about high school. Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school in New York in an aviation trade high school. Was that near I mean, where you lived? In no, the no, no. Oh. We required I get on a train. Okay. Yeah, at that time, the Third Avenue L was actually an above surface train, much like they have in Chicago now. Uh, now, of course, all the steel was sold to Japan so they could fight us in the world for it. <laughs> in any case, I went to school uh, downtown in Manhattan. I never missed a day of school. I got a little award for that. <laughs> I, liked, I liked school. And uh, what, How large was the school? Was it four years? Yeah, it was. For, it was that's one of the nice things about uh, growing up in New York. There's not a lot of nice things about growing up in New York, but one of the nice things is that they have, there's enough people, there are enough people so that if a boy or a girl wants to go to a specialized or a trade school, they had those things. Sure. Even that, in those days. Yeah, in those days. So I went to this aviation trade high school. It was a four-year program, but and the courses, I'm sure, were warded down from the typical uh, high school. And this is why I had to go back to high school when the uh, University of Illinois sure. rejected my application because they simply didn't have the appropriate credits. The prerequisites. Yeah, the prerequisites. And as it turned out, I went to... University of Illinois, uh, very, very short of of uh, competitive knowledge compared to the people sitting around me, but that's another story. In any case, I've been in- interested in aviation since uh, 12 or 13. So that's the reason you selected this high school? Yeah, ex- absolutely. Okay. That's, that's it, right. When, you, when uh, the student would get out of the high school, what career paths could they have? Mostly they, they were to uh, go work on, on airplanes as airplane and, and engine mechanics. Uh, but when I graduated in 1946, mm-hmm. the war had just ended, and and I was very happy nobody was going to be shooting at me. But the patriotic fervor was still great in the country, and so I was 17 at the time, and I wanted to get into the Air Force, and, and so my dad signed the papers, and off I went. And what? where did that take you? Uh, oh, that... Well, let's see, we did basic training in Biloxi, Mississippi, and in Texas, and I did very well in, and I chose aviation mechanics, as, and I did very well because I knew more than the instructors did, in most cases. Because you had that special training in oh, high yeah, school. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. And uh, I had no problem getting the uh, specialty airplane, uh, the airplane uh, that has, for the students... All the students went to Aviation Mechanic High School. But as when you graduated that, you were allowed to choose a specialization. At that time, helicopters were the desirable special, And only a few people, and I chose that. So I became a helicopter specialist. And I, 
after that training, I was shipped up to Alaska, uh, and I was in a 10th rescue squadron. And uh, I really enjoyed my time up there very much, but I hated the military. I couldn't understand why anybody would care how I made my bed. <laughs> And it was very difficult for me to take orders from people I knew were not, not anywhere near as smart as I was. So the military was, was tough in that respect, but had a lot of great experiences. Got a lot of helicopter time. And uh, Was I, most of it, you didn't get outside the U.S. then? Uh, in yeah. Alaska. Oh, well, I mean, except for... Well, well Alaska wasn't even, you know, sure. wasn't a state in those days. Right. Uh, so uh, when, my, when uh, my enlistment period was up, uh, the captain uh, uh, called me in and said, uh, we'd like you to re-enlist and we'll give you another a rank. Rank At that time, I had already risen to sergeant in, in less than three years, and he wanted to make me a staff sergeant. And I said, no, I said I'd had enough of that. And so I left the service. And when I got out, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, in the service, I had met... Uh, a tech rep from uh, Sikorsky. His name was Arnold Podolsky. I remember his name, and I said, that guy is doing a job that I think I would like to do. He was a tech rep. And I said, Arnold, what do you have to do to, what kind of background do you need? He said, well, you have to have a degree in engineering. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so uh, after I got out and I've already told you, I, I applied and then was rejected, and they told me... Why did they, you happen to select the University of Illinois? Cause you're my cousin, East, oh, my you cousin was going there at the okay. time. Okay. Uh, I could have selected any number of schools, but Illinois, well, it worked out very well because I met my wife there, yeah. so things... Let me ask you this. In those days, the state university system in New York, which is very, very extensive, as you know, yeah. there would have been... There were some facilities there that also offered engineering, or no. not at that time. Well, yeah, but there was there wasn't any. I don't. Uh, Illinois had a fairly good reputation okay. for engineering program at sure. the oh, time, yeah. right. and so that was another inducement for me to go to Illinois. As it turned out, it was a very very wise good. choice. Good. Uh, I, I kind of I, I was thinking about this the other day. All the major branches in my life have turned out to be very very good for me. I don't know whether I'm extremely lucky or just so smart. I Good factors. What, <laughs> I know what I knew what which way to go. The fact that I met my wife there was it's very because I'm there's a very unlikely place for me to be as Hillel. I'm not a very religious Jew to say to, to say at least I'm a cultural Jew. But uh, but she, I was uh, there to pick up some notes that I had loaned to a former girlfriend and her sister was going to school and and I was just there licking envelopes <laughs> and I told her I was going to marry her half an hour after I met her. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. Terrific. That's yeah, great. She thought I was a crazy man, but <laughs> probably did sound a little weird. But I told, I'm, I was very, very, a very, very confident person. And I, I, I kind of blame my parents for that. <laughs> it's not really, blame is not a really good word to use. But they, as I said, they fairly, they let me fairly, they left me fairly alone to go where I wanted to go sure. and do what I wanted to do. And as I said, I never really got into any trouble. You made a, the right choices. Yeah, and, and it was okay. So when I got out, as I say, I went to the University of Illinois. Okay. And I Did you take it. your uh, makeup courses or prerequisites there? I, no, in New York. Oh, then yeah. you went back. Now, the, see. now the, the night school wasn't too bad for me to take, but the day school was awful, <laughs> sitting there with the kids, you know. Sure. Uh, but, so I went to the University of Illinois in engineering, but uh, I was totally, totally unprepared, even with the makeup courses. I can still remember I was taking the uh, first course in chemistry and the, the teacher's talking about mole weights and you know, related subjects and everybody around, looking around everybody said, oh yeah, yeah they, well it turns out that they had a year of chemistry before they even went I never even heard of the word or, you know, hardly. So I was having really big disadvantage and that's the only course I ever got a D in. I was, I was glad to escape with that. At least you passed. Yeah, I passed, but they barely. Uh, so after a year of that, I said, that's enough. I don't, I mean, I, I just don't like engineering. I, I was more of a hands-on person, as you have witnessed mm -hmm. looking around. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to do after that. And I tried to get into the music school, but I, I played in the Anchor Symphony Orchestra for a while. But I'm not really a very good musician. And they didn't like my playing when I tried out. And I was just very lucky they rejected my application. 
that would have been a serious error on my part because I really didn't want to be a musician. Anyway, I got into the School of Industrial Education. It was the closest thing to what I thought I wanted to do. At Illinois. At Illinois, right. And I got, a, I got my bachelor's degree okay. from them okay. in industrial education. Uh, I had a job waiting for me when I was a senior in Chicago. They wanted, they were looking, they had an engine shop, aircraft engine shop that hadn't had anybody to uh, work with in that program. And uh, so they knew I was coming there. I mean, they knew about my background. I'm not quite sure how they got my name uh, or how I got associated with them. Anyway, they had offered me a job. They wanted me to come up when I was a senior. So I went and worked to, uh, for the Chicago Board of Education in a school called Lane Tech High School. And they had an engine shop there and uh, things were in a sorry state. So I just jumped right in and we got in, lots of engines running and we built some, I can remember we had, uh, it was an engine, uh, a V12, I don't know if you know what that is. It's an engine with 12 cylinders on it, but it's kind of upside down. It was, and uh, I got it running and we got an old Ford chassis and we built a big frame around it to protect people from the propeller and we put the engine in and we drive around the schoolyard with it. And, and we did things like that. Uh, and it, actually, it's a good thing I left because at the time, I was in the process of uh, working with an Allison V1710, which is a really big engine. And I had already bought the fly, you need a flywheel, a weight to, for inertial purposes. And I already bet, got a railroad wheel, and I was going to put the railroad wheel on the front instead of a propeller. And I think we would have killed somebody <laughs> if we had actually so. if we had actually gotten that thing running. That would have been disastrous. In any case, I I worked there three years. Did not like high school teaching. I were found, you married? At, excuse me. Were you married at oh, that time? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I was so. married at the time. I married when I was a senior. Okay. Yeah. So you were living in Chicago. And we were living in Chicago, right? And I didn't like that too much either. Uh, in any case. Uh, I didn't like uh, high school because I found myself being a, more of a policeman than, than I was a teacher. And I, I just wanted to be a teacher, and, and I love to teach, I really do. I, I used to look forward to school starting uh, after the summer vacation. I was chomping at the bit, ready to go. I, <laughs> I wanted to teach, I love to teach. And I love the students. I don't think they loved me as much as I love them, but that's another story in terror. <laughs> they love me now. I mean, I'm a lot of communication with my students now. So when a job offer came from the University of Illinois, uh, uh, Purdue University, rather, they was just starting up this aviation program, and it started one semester. The department had been selected and the man to teach the airframe portion of the program had been selected and they were in operation one semester and they recruited me and I went up there and I actually took a cut in salary to, to but I just didn't want to teach high school anymore although I had free reign I was doing exactly what I wanted to do nobody ever bothered me I, I got a little money to buy thing, little things not, not major expenditures but we got enough money and support from the school to, to do what I wanted to do. Get some equipment and things. Yeah, right. Sure. So everything was fine except the students at that age. I just didn't know how to handle them. I think I was a little too close to them in age. Could be. And yeah. so I would. I think I would do much better if I were to do it again, but I'm not about to. <laughs> so in any case, when the job offer came from Purdue, I took it. And we went, and we came up here, and, I, and the rest is history as far as the department is concerned. Well, tell us about the early days, but let me ask you this. When you came, uh, where did you live when you came here? Okay, we lived in a rented apartment on Ferry Street. Okay, in Lafayette. Uh, yeah, in Lafayette. And uh, the people there happened to be uh, Jewish, which was just coincidental, but they were happy to see us. Uh, I'm not religious. Was this in a house, an apartment? It was, it was, it was a house. Okay. on the corner of Ferry, very close to the corner of Ferry and 9th Street. And uh, so that so we got along fine, uh, but uh, we wanted something a little bit better. So our first home was a national. 
I think we we went from them to a national, didn't we, Iris? Yeah, it was a national home, and his headquarters were here. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. right. And so we built a we we bought a national home, which suited our purposes very very well. Oh, well, there's still and, a lot of them around. And we our house is still standing. Uh, we we sometimes have occasion to go through the old neighborhood, and, and I don't know how many years we were there. Was do you remember? Ten. Several years, sure. okay. and, and and by that time I had been making enough money. I never made a lot of money, I must say. The aviation technology department was very, very poorly supported, uh, and still is actually. But that's another story you don't want to don't want to hear too well, much. Well, tell us about the early days of the department when you you came on board just about yeah, that time. right. And, and that was, so right. at that time, we had a full blown airframe and power plant mechanics program. And uh, the students, but we were not a, not a uh, part of university. We were part of continuing education. Okay. Good. And then after a number of years, the school of technology was formed, and we were incorporated into that, and we became an official program, university program. Up to that time, we had not been. In those early days under continuing education, who were your students? Whom were you teaching? We, we were getting students that were wanting to get, go to college. Did they need certification for some things? or Not. not? Okay. They, they just, wanted their AMP. Yeah, they wanted their airframe and power plant license. Okay. And so they could get it through us. But then, then the rest of the program was a step above what they would normally have been able to get in a, just a straight mechanics program. Because right. they were taking college English and math and things like that. So we had a little, uh, a little bit more advanced program than one. My, it was. It wasn't just a mechanics program. There were other things in there. They were taking other university courses, right. and a lot of the students went out to work as mechanics. But the ones that did that eventually wound up, and uh, they, they worked for a while, number of years. Then they seemed to get dissatisfied with just the tool handling part and so many of them got into management or, or areas or or associated with the airlines sure. so and as I have a list of students I got a as they say I'm in contact with a lot of students now and uh, they, they've all gone different ways after a number of years uh, I don't think it was more than a couple the flight program started and uh, and that brought us additional recognition. Uh, and Where were you located? Out at the airport? Uh, yeah, we were all at the okay. airport in okay. the old building. By the way, speaking of that, they've uh, uh, one of our former students uh, succeeded very well, uh, not, in a particu not particularly in aviation, but he started a trucking company, uh, Nicewanger is his name, and he contributed uh, several millions of dollars to build a simulator building and to build an addition onto the old aviation technology buildings. Just beautiful, just absolutely gorgeous. I'm anxious to see it. Oh yeah, you definitely should go out because it's unbelievable. In, in any case, as you know, the dedication is this Friday, right. four o'clock, I'm not quite sure what they have planned, but uh, so anyway, as the school advanced and the students became more and more uh, integrated with the normal university population, uh, the character of the courses began to change. At first, we were simply a, a degree, a, 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 an A&P granting program, and then finally we got a, a degree uh, program, and and then uh, the school of nursing became part of uh, technology. the technology. But they were soon they soon divorced themselves from us because their program was so different, and they, they didn't seem to fit very well. So that, so they left, and uh, as as the years went by, we became more and more uh, involved in take, uh, having the students to take regular university courses other than the AP. So so finally, they were very much like um, mechanical engineering technology students. Uh, there was slightly difference with an em different with an emphasis on getting the airframe and power plant license. Which I have, by the way. I have an airframe power plant license. You have to be, I don't know if you're familiar with that, you have to be licensed by the government right. to work on airplanes. And, uh, which is probably a good idea because 
I didn't want to be sitting in any aluminum tube at 30,000 feet going 500 miles an hour sitting behind some incompetent. <laughs> so <laughs> to the degree that I could do something I about it. <laughs> yeah, I did. And that was, that made it tough uh, because uh, the, the kids being uh, exhibiting human nature, you know, it's hard to get them to study. But I had, of course, organized that uh, they were almost forced to read the assignment. I had a pretty sneaky way of getting them to read their assignments. And now, now, now that I left for the first time, the school's undergone a radical change, and it's probably just as well that I'm not there because I guess I'd be considered from the old school. I'm not sure exactly where the students are coming from or where they're going to go. You'd have to talk to somebody else because uh, the program has the changed. program has changed a lot, and, and not necessarily for the worse. No, I, no, I no, just, no, no, uh, but. Times change and things right, change, right. change comes. And right. we're much, much more, uh, um, more like uh, a, st a standard, regular student graduating from some program in a university. Sure. The math requirements are, are, are up and, and other requirements are up. Right. And so that's where the school now stands. Yeah. Uh, We'll talk, you want, uh, let's talk a little about your research with the gas turbine engines and also your publication. I knew nothing. When I first came to uh, Purdue, I was teaching about reciprocating engines, aircraft reciprocating engines, and I did that for a number of years. When the gas turbines started to become prominent, uh, we wanted to start a course in gas turbines. I knew nothing about gas turbines, nothing. So I... I studied and researched and contacted companies and uh, learned m myself uh, about the gas turbine engine. And uh, one of the things I used to do with the students, which, which benefit me, benefited me uh, greatly, was every, every week, at the beginning of the semester, I told the students they would have to prepare a report, an oral report. And they would come to the house in groups of four. Every week we had a group of four students here for, I don't know, 30 years, at least that. And they would have a, they would have researched the topic of their own choosing. I didn't allow any duplicates. So they would come to me and they say, I want to, Professor Trigger, I want to talk about this and that. And, that. and I said, okay. You know. These, they worked in, they worked in a group though. No, individual. individual. These okay. were individual reports. Okay. Uh, they have to be at least, at least a half an hour long, maybe longer. And so, it's and all they, semester takes all semester. They well, the assignments were chosen at the beginning of the semester, and about halfway through the semester, we had the first group come in. And by the end of the semester, every student had performed. So they'd come here in the evening. They would have researched their uh, topic, and they would come in the evening. They would sit on a couch out here, and I'd sit over here in a little aside with a grading sheet. And I would listen to the report, and there were ten areas on which I graded. Uh, in addition to the technical expertise, I listened to how they presented themselves, how much research they had done. Uh, it, was, it turned out to be a very, very good thing to do, because it got students to get up there and talk, and it it, it put a lot of students in contact with the potential employers. They got a lot of research material, and and uh, it worked out very well. My wife would make a cake afterwards, and she <laughs> she used to make different cakes every time a group came over until the kids came back. What'd you get? What'd you get? <laughs> so <laughs> she quit that. Like she made cake. she made her standard cake, triple chocolate cake. She's a pretty good cook, and uh, and and I would record the sessions and give it copy to the students so they could see what they looked like, what they sounded like. But the thing that started me on this whole explanation was in their research, they gathered a wealth of material on the gas turbine engine. And I wound up with four filing cabinets, four individual filing cabinets, four, four drawers, drawers deep four drawers. from whence comes the book. <laughs> see. And it was never my intent to do that, just but came. I but I had so much material. Oh yeah, you had to do something with uh, it. Yeah, I mean it was just invaluable, and so uh, I put together a book, and the book has uh, had great success. 
I mean, really, never thought it would do that well, but it's done very well. You know, just the third edition came yeah, out. Are you going to do another one? Oh, yeah. Oh, you got uh, another one in the works? Well, yeah, okay. I've got some. For example, here's a little a little drawing I made up to demonstrate something. There's a lot of stuff in here. That Things in the works. But yeah. wasn't in here before. Anyway, uh, the book has done very well. Uh, it got me promoted to full professor. I'm sure I never would have made full professor with only a master's degree. What was the promotion process? It was not. It, it was the same as the same as everybody else. You went before a committee yeah. of your peers. But it's changed a lot over time. It's a lot of hard. I I don't I don't know I don't think I would have been promoted in today's milieu. Did you Did you start out as the assistant or an instructor? No, I started out as instructor. Okay. I started at the bottom of the ladder, <laughs> okay. and uh, quickly. Well, when rose. I first came in, the library was an instructor. And then, when they eliminated that rank, and then mm -hmm. went to assistant, you know, yeah. the same right. steps. So, so I eventually went up to the rank of full professor, and got lots of letters and testimonies. And I got mean? all kinds of materials from students here thanking me for what I had done for them, and That's uh, nice. and. Uh, it was the only thing I could have. I couldn't act any other way. I wanted to teach, and I think I was a good teacher. It was tough. I had certain standards. You either performed or you were gone. Uh, but I was very helpful, and I was mostly, most uh, fair. Uh, I had a tough grading system. The students, after a number of years, this, I knew where the division points should be, pretty much. And I could tell them at the beginning of the semester, here you make this number of points, you were a thousand points in the course, and here's how you earn them. Just and lay here, it on the line. Uh, That's they knew exactly. And no I had surprises. Every, every day that they came to class, they had a short test. Every day that they came to class, they went to class Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. At the beginning of the class, I had a five question quiz true or false, based on a reading assignment. So it was a great incentive for them to read. Right. And uh, it, was a, it was a reasonable portion of the grade. 20% of the grade sure. was based upon those numbers. So this seems fair. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, and you did a lot of counseling. And, well, did you handle I the did, counseling? And yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah okay. I did a lot of counseling. One, okay. of, the, one, of, the, one of the most difficult counseling problems I faced, and I faced it a number of times, is where the uh, situation is boy meets girl. Girl graduates from our program. Boy graduates from our program. They are both offered good jobs and so long. <laughs> they say split. Now, every once in a while, we've been invited to several weddings. So every once in a while, they marry, which is a big, big mistake. Because uh, if, one, if one partner is a pilot, a, a pilot uh, that's bad enough because they're never home. They're never home. But when two pilots, two uh, wife and wife. husband, they never see each other. So several of them got divorced. But I'm in contact with the people who got divorced too. And I, mm -hmm. I have a daily joke list I send down. That's why I keep in contact with, with them all. So didn't President Baring's second son's he was wife, not, yeah he he, he his graduated. wife was graduated from the A Tech program right? and he, his son. I don't know about. I thought he was an electrical. The second one wasn't it? Isn't his? He may have been an electrical, but he was taking flight. I know he was taking yeah. flight his courses. His wife is a pilot, though, isn't she? I flies? don't. That I don't know. Oh, okay, I thought maybe. I, I yeah, don't maybe know mistaken. anything about that. But his son was in the program. His, his, his son was either in the program or was an outsider taking the flight sure. courses. I never found out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was what just, about the uh, summer project? How did that come about? You still doing the summer projects for the uh, piston test? You helped out. Uh, some of the in the summertime, in the, the first, in the first years, I was out of work in the summertime. You know, so You're on I, I would just simply, I would simply uh, uh, go and help build things because they just needed to be built. And I didn't, I didn't get paid for that. It was just something I wanted to sure. do. So we got a couple of uh, test cells. I mean, the test cells were in, in operation, and that turned out to be a really good teaching uh, tool and uh, built other things and uh, benefited the department, and, and that's what I did during my summer vacation. Now, sometime later, after a few years, I was contacted by um, a, a person who was offering a course 
in uh let's see what was it aircraft no accident investigation. accident yeah that's right sorry accident investigation and he had uh, courses all over the world so he contacted me i'm not quite sure how he got my name but I maybe through the book yeah. and uh, or through I, a colleague or yeah somewhere. and i joined the, his organization and uh I went to uh, went to Africa several times and Spain several times Portugal. Uh, and Portugal and my job and he had a group my job in the group was to teach the students or give the students some idea of how a gas turbine worked so that if they had any trouble they could at least and, and they were talking about compressors or combustion chambers or turbines they would at least have some foggy idea what the hell a combustion chamber was and what a compressor was and that's what i did and i enjoyed that very much and because we got to we got to go you know not all over the world but a lot of different places we went on a couple of safaris as uh, incidental it's enriching to, your life oh that was i mean <laughs> Yeah, that was that was when we could both move freely. We can't do that much anymore. <laughs> My, uh, and it's, uh, I'm reminded it's about the handball. Course. You mentioned the handball. Uh, I don't play handball anymore. I used to play it. I really miss it very much. But after five back surgeries, my back finally gave out, yeah. and and so I don't do that anymore. But I, but we go down one day. Wasn't right, and she works on the treadmill, and I sit down and. Criticize the handball players. <laughs> you keep your, you keep your finger in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about your off campus, those adult education courses, things that you did. Right. For that and the uh, aerospace workshops. Well, the adult through. education courses are those that I just described oh, okay. to you. Okay. Okay. And then did you did some summer things for what uh, aerospace workshops for teachers? Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'd forgotten about those. Yeah, yeah I did that. Uh, that was just great. That was just gratis, though. I don't. I don't believe we got paid for that. I don't. What uh, about the? You did you did some consulting for uh, Rolls Royce? Uh, for actually, mostly for Williams International. And oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, what I would do is, uh, what happened was, uh, Mr. Williams came down. He wanted to tour our facilities. He had heard about me, I guess, and what I had done. And, he was very impressed with the test cell and the other things that I had done. He turned to his, uh, what what was his job? Major Domo, I thought. Yeah, it was. and he said, uh, see if you can get Professor Trigger up to uh, where we are. They were up in uh, uh, Wisconsin. Wall Lake. Yeah, Wall Lake, Wisconsin. And so I was hired, and I came up there. And I, I went up, the first time I went up there, I said, what can I teach these guys? Because these guys were all engineers. I wasn't quite really quite sure what I could do, but he, he assured me that I had something to say. And it turns out I did, because while there were a lot of engineers up there, and they were good engineers, they were very, very highly specialized. And so they had people who were interested in... Uh, how to design a compressor blade and other people how to design a combustion chamber you know that type of thing sure. but nobody up there honest to goodness there was one guy and all the time i taught up there that really had an understanding of how the parts fit together and how the thing worked as a as an integrated machine and i i knew that and they i mean i've got all kinds of pictures and and, and, and notes from them here i think oh i know here yeah. Here I am with some typical students, you know, just class work. I was young. I had black beard at that time. <laughs> they, were, they were good students, and they were all very, very interesting. And I've got dozens and dozens of reports because I was graded. Sure. Yeah, and... Uh, do you do this in the summer? Yeah, in the summer yeah, in the okay. summertime, right, right. How long did it last? For a couple of weeks, or...? Uh, the course was two weeks. I don't know. You taught oh, it at the facility? Ahead. Yeah, at their at their place. The mm -hmm. same way with the, when we went to Africa, when we went to Portugal, when we went to Spain, the, they had a, a facility. Yeah, sure. at the yeah, facility. In Utah. Oh, in Utah. Yeah, I forgot that one because Williams had a plant up in Utah. He wanted me to go there too and and speak to the to the workers. And you taught a couple of courses for the Air Force. She she got her memory is a lot better than mine. That's true. Well, that's well, it's okay. So there's yeah. so there was a lot of extracurricular sure. teaching. Right. Okay. But okay. as they say, so the early early summers were pretty much doing work for the department. 
but later on, my summers were pretty right. filled. Okay. Department heads, when you came, that would have been Jim Maris was the head? Of Maris the was the first department head, okay. yeah. And then what, Duncan came after that? And Duncan, exactly, okay. Duncan followed. Okay. And, and Duncan, Bill and I would uh, ride our motorcycles around. I drove a motorcycle, and uh, I loved it. And, but uh, as it turned out that Bill got hurt on a motorcycle, uh, he, he went riding at night, which is not a good idea. And I wasn't, usually we went out together, but uh, he went, went out, out riding at that night. Time? Oh. And uh, he ran a, a deer ran across the road, and he hit it. Through, it's a good thing he had a helmet on it, because uh, they showed me the helmet, and the helmet was really smashed. He would have been dead. But anyway, that scrambled his his uh, brains a little bit. Uh, not so that he he couldn't communicate, but he, it changed him very, very much. And and then uh, a couple of years after that, I sold my bike, not because I wanted to, but because my back says you don't you're not going to get on a motorcycle anymore, <laughs> Erwin. <laughs> so um. I missed it. My wife was really very good about that. She she was worried every time I went out, and and I would be very very careful. Everybody had the right of way as far as I'm concerned, and, but she she never she, she never really indicated that I. Uh, was forcefully indicated that she, she didn't want me to go and ride the bike. She was kind of supportive of that because she knew I enjoyed it very much. But I'm sure she was glad when I sold it. I think she <laughs> it was, was a joint thing there, right? Okay. <laughs> the student know. enrollment uh, over time has increased. Has, has increased. I, right. I always thought that. And this... then the graduate program came along too, didn't it? Right, and the graduate program really started at the, in the latter part of my tenure. In okay. the latter part of my tenure, so I really didn't have too much. Right. to do with that. So at first, as I said, I was teaching about piston engines, right. and, uh, and then we switched over when the gas turbine came along. Sure. I, I self-taught myself uh, with the aid of the students' research, right. I must admit, give credit where credit is due. And that's what I did until my until my retirement. We'll talk about that. But I got some hobbies and special interests, and I'd like you to talk about them. Well, uh, okay. Well, you've seen some of them. Let me see some of the hobbies. Uh, um, well, your special interest is the yeah. Uh, and let me see first hobbies. Well, first of all, I was a bike driver. I already told that it was kind of a hobby. I'm a pilot. Uh, rebuilt. A junk airplane. I mean, I rebuilt. I wouldn't let anybody touch the engine. That was mine. I took the engine totally apart and refurbished it and fixed it up. Have you ever gone to that uh, thing in Wisconsin that's every year? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh yeah, I did. I, I did. We, uh, several times we flew up there. One time we flew up in my airplane. I used to own an airplane. This The airplane turned into a house. This house. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> It settled down, right? Yeah. It, so, it, it got so, grounded. So, yeah, right. We had to sell it. <laughs> we were going to buy a house. So, but I, I really miss the airplane. It was a beautiful thing. Did you keep it out of the airport? Yeah, we kept it at the airport. Yeah, I got many. I got a lot of pictures of you. Want us to really oh, see what it looks like? It's a, what did you? What happened to the plane? We sold it. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I sold my share. We we're going to build a house. <laughs> so everybody was unhappy. I got checked out uh, by uh, Charlie Holloman. I don't know if you heard of his name. I've interviewed him. Yeah, right. He he came after I did, but not very much after I and I think he's still flying and Charlie and I are pretty good friends and so we flew up to Washkosh a couple of times and uh, drove a couple of times now now my back is just can't I can't walk anymore so uh, just have to take we, it easy yeah we right. well I don't have to take it easy but I feel a lot better <laughs> if my back is not hurting all the time right. talk about your retirement in California too yeah yeah I went on a sabbatical on sabbatical uh, in California, and taught uh, up there for a year, and uh, was uh, they wanted me to stay, but uh, I said no. I was, I was going back, and sure. it would have been nice to stay, but there were there were reasons why I didn't want to stay. I won't, I won't get into that. <laughs> Talk about retirement activities, and they're still about teaching your advanced gas uh, turbine course. Where, well, well, the hobbies keep me pretty much. I'm I'm on a computer all the time, and as I say. I send out a daily joke every day to dozens and dozens of Good. almost 100 people. And uh, you saw some of the hobbies, the stained glass, and as they say, we're going to make you a you'd like to pick up unusual got, clocks? Yeah, right, and build them, build clocks. I got one going on in the basement right now, a building. It's a wooden clock. 
and do some woodworking. Oh yeah, and and I build a lot of furniture, and uh, make wine and make cheese and pickles. Pickles, yeah, don't forget the pickles, <laughs> and uh, do a lot of cooking now. Uh, I don't know what I'm a musician, as I said. I played in the Anchor Symphony Orchestra for a while. They were very desperate for a clarinet player. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> but I was available, and uh, I didn't get thrown off the stage, I guess. But so didn't make too many bloopers. Do you still play in the Citizens Band? No, I oh, don't. Okay. I okay. just I, that, I, that's I, in the summer, is it not? Yeah, it's yeah, in the summertime. Thought, yeah. yeah, I just got I just got a little tired of it. It, it required a little too much expenditure of time. Sure. Uh, I. Uh, well, it was hard for you Sharon, to... Sharon, who was the lead uh, clarinetist, said I could come back anytime I wanted to. Um, I mean, it was very difficult for me to stop, right. to quit. But it, it was time, sure. you know. Let's talk about family. You, you were, in addition, you were, do you have children? We had, um, we had three. Uh, Did we they had, go to Purdue? Yeah, we had, they, actually, they all went to Purdue. Uh, for some time, not all of them graduated from Purdue. Now, Lisa, uh, that's the one girl we had. We had two boys and a, and uh, and then a girl came along. We we were all, did we decide? I remember we decided we were going to have two, but we then said let's try one more and well out, out came a girl. <laughs> yeah, we wanted a girl. Yeah, we wanted so a girl. Had, so then a third boy. We had a boy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyway. Uh, Lisa is, is, the, is the one girl, and as I say, she... She must be the youngest. She's the baby. Okay. Yeah, she's, yeah she's, she's has a fine job with Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. As I said to you mm-hmm. privately, she's involved in a lot of the space missile shots. She's a senior she, mathematician. She's a senior mathematician for Johns Hopkins. Where'd she get her degree from? Right here. Oh, okay. She Did she go on in, afterwards and get any graduate work? Oh, okay. Her master's is from Johns Hopkins. Oh, yeah, that's right. She did get a master's from Johns Hopkins, right. But she just got a, a, a bachelor's degree from here. She majored in uh, science, science and, math. and math. And she did very well. She's a smart girl. And so she did very well. And I can still remember that she got a job right out of school. And, and this is the only job she ever had. They came looking for her. The same firm she's with now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it's Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Uh, there is such a thing called a job book at the university, and she had listed her attributes. And people came and looked it over and said, we want this girl. And so one of the discussions they interviewed her, one of the discussions uh, she had with uh, one of the people, he uh, he said, uh, can you do Fortran? Do you know anything about Fortran? She said, no, she hadn't studied Fortran. She, he said, well, here's the book. Go away and learn it. This is after they had already hired her. So they hired her on a basis of she had proven, proven that she could learn. And even though she didn't know about this particular language that they were right. uh, pushing, uh, she could learn, and she did. And so that's the only job she's ever had. And she's, uh, she's, she's really quite senior there. She only works, she works half-time and never has worked full-time. She doesn't want to work any more than that. She has children of her own. And so she's done very well. That's nice. Uh, we're really proud of her. And then Mark, David, the oldest one, uh, also graduated from Purdue in engineering. Uh, he, he graduated uh, from uh, interdisciplinary engineering with a major in electrical engineering. And biomedical. Uh, and biomedical. He was kind of interested in biomedical stuff, too. Uh, and he he uh, he's done very he he got a, an MBA from uh, uh, Mich- Wisconsin yeah Wisconsin yeah and and uh, his engineering uh, degree helped him he wasn't really interested in engineering as a matter of fact I asked him one time I said hey Mark you're taking this interdisciplinary engineering and and all these guys are studying mechanical engineering or electrical engineering they're going to know a lot more than you do about those particular subjects and he said don't worry Pop. He says, he didn't want to be an engineer. All he wanted was the title because he and wanted to be a manager. This is kind of an interdisciplinary sort of program anyway. Yeah, right. and he wanted the title. And he, he, he was always in management. He would go to a company and he would set up the flow, the line, you know, machinery and lay out the production processes. Yeah, he always had good jobs. And unfortunately, he died from an arrhythmia 
Hard, totally unexpected. How old was Mark? 51? 50? It was two years ago. Yeah. yeah. It was a big shock, obviously. Oh, yeah. But uh, he, he did very well. He did well. His wife's a lovely woman. And then, and then there's Steve, the, the wanderer. <laughs> uh, he at first wanted to be a musician. He got to be pretty good. Well, they all played musical instruments, first of all, because we made that, at least I did, and Ira certainly didn't have any ob objection to it. I thought that uh, learning how to play an instrument was uh, about the same as learning how to read and write. And I, I wasn't going to give him an option whether they wanted to le learn how to read and write. I wasn't going to give him an option whether they picked up an instrument and blew it. I didn't care what instrument, just as long as they did it, because I found for my own personal experience that if you go that route, even though you, even though you don't really use it professionally, you when you hear a piece of music, it's so, you hear so much more sure. if you understand a little bit about its construction. Yeah. So he wanted to be a musician. He turned out to be a fairly good trumpet player, and he 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 traveled around with a band, and he got a little tired of that after sleeping in a truck, and so he went back to school. And he got a ba he got his uh, he got a bachelor's degree and then he got a, he got a master's degree and he almost has a PhD now. And uh, what's his area here at Purdue? That's that's a good question. His area uh, is very uh, what I thought was somewhat esoteric is ethnomusicology. ethnomusicology, which really does not describe what he's doing. What what he what he is majoring in and what he's really pretty good at already is the whole structure of what music is, how it's derived, how it's written, how it's played, how it's interpreted, you know, you know that thing. Everything about how it's sold, marketed, everything about music. It's music, yeah. It's from, from its initial writing to its ultimate sale and its performance. That's what he's, that's what he's studied. He's, he's already finished his papers. All he does, has to do is uh, get the committee together and he'll be a PhD. But he's getting a little old now. So we've been pushing him, pushing him. Push, you know, he's up. almost finished though, huh? Yeah. What does he? What is his plans after he receives it then? You, if you tell us, we'll both know. <laughs> he has some thoughts, what? probably. What his plans are. He was uh, offered a job. He, he wants to be in... Uh, a studio. He wants to set up a music program which en en encompasses all of these things that I talked about. Right. But from the conductor's point of view, yeah. from the musician's point of view, everything. From the players' oh, point yeah. of view. He got an offer from um, down south here. Yeah, Ball State. Ball State. But he, he rejected it, which was kind of a mistake, I thought. But because they weren't really willing, they just wanted him to go in and stand in front of a class and talk. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to set up a program with some equipment. How is the recording yeah, made? Yeah. And, you know, really go into it. And they, they weren't ready to support that. So when he finds a job, if he finds a job, I think he will eventually. Oh, sure. Right now, his wife is a very fine musician. Uh, she plays with the Air Force Band, in the Air Force Band. And, and she'll be getting out in one of about five or six more years. And oh, she's know, in the Air Force. She's in the Air Force right now, with the highest enlisted rank she can make right now. And so they're happy. Good. And that's, that's key. all we ask. And I would like to see him get his degree because it'll be the first one. As they say, I'm a little unhappy about the fact that I didn't go on with my studies, but there was no need for it no, at that you time. You did all right. You're fine. How about a uh, Purdue tradition? Does some come to mind that you'd like to share with us? Any Purdue tradition? How about an outstanding event? Or it doesn't have necessarily... Like, sometimes people say they have to be Purdue. I said, no, anything that comes to mind. I don't, I don't know if I've ever really... Iris and I used to be, as they, as they said, we, we met at the University of Illinois. Now, when we were at the University of Illinois, it's just, we used to go to a lot of the parades that went on and, and a lot of the oh, we were young. gymnastics... <laughs> You know, but really, we haven't. I worked as a as a. The only thing, the only closest thing that I, I did here for Purdue was that. Uh, oh, I've, I've done something else, but uh, was uh, I was a um, an usher. An usher. I was trying to think of the word at the football stadium. You know, 
but but nowadays the, the the only real connection I have with the university itself is uh, we contribute uh, to Convo. the convos. Uh, my wife has established a fund in my name called the Trigger Fund, where the students can buy cut rate uh, right. tickets. Uh, any number that they want. That's uh, for twelve dollars. They can go to any convo program that they want to. Very nice. And uh, that and it used to be two dollars. Well, yeah, it's right. Now. It's now twelve dollars. Uh, but still, that's a bond. That's they oh, can yes. afford that. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Uh, and they appreciate. And so that cost what what seven thousand, wasn't it? I think we we now contribute seven thousand dollars a year. That's very nice to the convo. That's and we're we're happy. That's good. We're happy with and that. And the students are too, and you know that they're enjoying it. So that's the bottom right. Line. It's a cheap date, uh, right? And and uh, they get a little musical education. Sure. Culture. Yeah. Well, I figured this was an engineering school, but even though it's an engineering school, I felt they should have some contact with the arts. Excuse me. I think of uh, half a dozen or well, more things. You can uh, add those with, afterwards when you get the transcript. Let me see. Let me see. What else has gone on? I don't know. We just... Uh, no, just the school has grown and you stayed and been here a long time and you're... Uh, you yeah. As I said before, it's probably just as well. I'm, I got I'm kind of stuck in a rut and, and the school has, has changed radically since I graduated. Uh, they they become very very much more like a standard university program, uh, and it wasn't that way when I started. And uh, that's not necessarily bad. No, Don't it was different times at that time. But it was just different, right? right. And so, well, I want. I think this is very good. I want to thank you very much. I want oh, to thank your wife okay. too. Yeah, I think things, I'd love to show you some of the written materials that the students have sent me. But well, that, I can look at a couple oh, of those. That will be well, good. I, I don't know. Yeah, what, 